Hi everybody, it's Amanda Rideout, welcome back. And today I'm excited because we're gonna talk about a real important topic for me, especially with our favorite pharmacist, cosmetic chemist and nutritionist, Ben Fuchs. How are you doing, Ben? Nice to see you, Amanda. You look beautiful and your skin looks awesome. And Thank your hair you. Looks awesome. um, if I just may, I wanna tell you what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know I'm on all of your four products. Okay? Omega-6 your healing cream, True Serum, Truth Balm, and the retinol too? And the retinol. Nice. And I just have to say, and we've been talking about this, but as every month passes, the skin just gets better and yeah. younger yeah, yeah. and clearer. And people are saying, oh my gosh, why, why does your skin look so great? I'm like, well, because I'm using Ben stuff on the outside and Longevity on the inside. Awesome. But awesome. I want to tell everybody, this Omega-6 healing cream, we, we have a, a video specifically on this one, but I put this stuff under my makeup, on top of my makeup, on my heels, on my lips. Uh, it, I just put it all over, and I can't get enough of this. Um, nice. I think you're going to have to sell them in, like, two-pound vats or something. I don't know. Nice, nice, nice. But um, this stuff, I have a little one in my purse. This stuff gets me through any skin, uh, skin dryness, which is what we're going to talk about today. Right. Dry skin. Um, I love it. And this and the serum... The day serum, um, I just, the way it makes me feel is great. Do you do um, use it with your mineral makeup? Have you explored uh, making a paste with the mineral makeup? I do. You, here's what I do. I, I wash my face, I, you know, whatever, and then I put my, the, a few drops of the serum with the Omega underneath, and that preps it. Right. That's all I do. And then I use my Longevity mineral makeup. And I like to spray it with a little spray that I make with our plant-derived minerals and some essential oils. And um, I spray my brush and I apply it so it goes on, like you said, like a paste, I right. guess. Um, what a is foundation, it? Found, it's like a foundation. Right? right, like a foundation. And then if, if, because I have very dry skin, if I feel a little dry, I'll spray my face again and I'll add a little more of Omega-6 Omega healing. healing cream. Right. And... I glow. Here's the deal, Amanda. We're going to talk about dry skin. Okay. Well, what you're doing is you're not moisturizing your skin like with a typical moisturizer. You're vitaminizing your skin. Yeah. You're getting vitamin C. You're getting, if you use the retinol, you're getting vitamin A. You're getting cholesterol, which is a super important ingredient for dry skin. And you're getting, uh, uh, with the omega-6 healing cream, you're getting omega-6 fatty acids. So that's why the results accrue over time. That's why you get more and more results as time goes on. And that's the mark of a good topical skincare product. If you get better and better results over the course of time, and that's exactly what you're noticing. Because you're nutriating your skin. You're vitaminizing your skin. Why just smear a, mo a moisturizing cream on your skin, which is wax and oil and water and emulsifiers and, and, and silicon and not to mention preservatives and fragrances on your skin when you could put high concentrations of nutrients on top of the skin. And that's really what the skin's crying out for when you have dry skin. When you have, and we, we could talk about dry skin now, right? Yeah, go ahead, okay, go, go for it. All right, when you have dry skin, what you're experiencing is at the, found, at the most fundamental level, a nutritional issue. And when I talk about nutrition, I'm not just talking about internal nutrition. I'm also talking about topical nutrition. The skin right. turns over faster than any other tissue in the body, say perhaps the digestive tract, which means when you're deficient in nutrients, it's going to show up on your skin first. The skin is like the canary in the coal mine. You ever hear the story of the canary in the coal mine, how, how coal miners used to bring a canary with them, and when they know, when the canary dropped dead, they knew it was time to get out of the coal mine because yeah. <laughs> the canary was more susceptible to the toxicity in the coal mine, and, and they would, the canary would experience the toxicity quicker than the, than the people who were working in the coal mine. So they used the canary as an indicator of the toxicity that was in the environment. Well, likewise, your skin is a rapid barometer or indicator of what's happening inside the body in terms of nutritional deficiency. And dry skin is a classic manifestation of this. If you have dry skin, you have a nutritional problem. And in combination with a digestive problem, because in the world of nutrition, it's yeah. not only what you take, it's also what you're absorbing, what yeah. you're digesting, and what you're assimilating. So the most important consideration when it comes to taking care of your dry skin is to take care of your nutrition. And that means internal nutrition. And if you're using the truth, you're using truth treatment products, topical nutrition as well, because there's a, there are things you can do with topical nutrients right. as well as internal nutrients. So let's talk about... Well, let's talk about the skin, first of all, as it, as, it regards dry, as it regards dryness. The technical term, by the way, for skin dryness is xerosis, X-E-R-O-S-I-S, xerosis. So 
dry skin, in order to understand really what's happening with dry skin, we've got to understand a little bit about the structure of the skin. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into it too much, but just to say that there's three layers of the skin. And each one of these three layers to, in the skin is involved in some way in, how it's, uh, in, this, in the health of the tissue, especially as it regards dryness. The surface of the skin, the very tippy top, is a hard layer. It's called the stratum corneum, meaning hard layer in Latin. Stratum corneum, hard layer. Second layer of the skin is called the epidermis. That means on top of the dermis. And that's where, that's maybe about as thick as a piece of paper or so. And then you have uh, uh, the lower layer, which is called the dermis. And that's about as thick as maybe 10 pieces of paper. So stratum corneum is about one-tenth as thick as a piece of notebook paper. The epidermis is maybe 10 times as big as that, maybe a piece of notebook paper. And then the lower layer, which is the bulk of the skin, the dermis, is about 10 pieces of notebook paper. Each one of these three layers plays a role in the formation of dry skin or the development of dry skin. Stratum corneum seals everything up. The main purpose of the stratum corneum is to keep moisture in. If you have a defect in the formation of this layer, water will leak out. Water will evaporate out, not leak out. It will evaporate out. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to leak. <laughs> it will evaporate out. It's, it's the technical term for this is T-E-W-L, transepidermal water loss. And this is a measurement of how healthy the skin is, T-E-W-L. Unhealthy skin is going to have a higher water loss. It's going to have more water loss, and this is one of the major features of dry skin. If you have a nutritional deficiency around essential fatty acids, and this is the key element when it comes to taking care of skin, uh, when it comes to taking care of skin health, you're going to have defects in the stratum corneum barrier. And this is very common as we get older, and it's especially common as women get older because women typically will have issues absorbing fats as uh, menopause and as perimenopause and menopause approach. So defects in the stratum corneum barrier are going to uh, cause more water, water evaporation, more water loss, and that's one of the reasons why we have dry skin. This is one of the reasons why people think a moisturizing cream will help because a, moisturizer, a moisturizing cream seals that surface, that yeah. stratum corneum, and you reduce transepidermal water loss, TEWL, and you reduce the amount of water that evaporates. And this is the traditional way, and to this day, it's, it's been the traditional way for 100 years or more, and up until today, this is how most people treat their dry skin, by sealing the surface. However, this creates a problem, because underneath the surface, underneath the stratum corneum, where you have your epidermis, you actually have sponges molecular sponges, not real sponges, but molecular sponges, biochemical sponges that function the same way a regular sponge does, by trapping water. These molecular sponges are collectively referred to as the NMF, which stands for natural moisturizing factor. And this NMF, this natural moisturizing factor, is made up of a complex of proteins and sugars and, and certain fats that surround it, uh, some of these fats are based in the element cholesterol, uh, our, our, yeah. favorite, uh, our favorite demonized molecule in the body, cholesterol. It's my favorite. <laughs> super important for keeping the skin soft, and it's part of, the, part of the natural moisture factor. It's not technically part of the natural moisture factor, but it surrounds the natural moisture factor. So the epidermis is really where the water gets trapped in the skin. However, if you seal the surface, the body doesn't think that it needs to make natural moisture factor. So sealing the surface has a suppressant, or as we say in chemistry, down-regulating effect on the natural moisture factor. So sealing the surface of the skin with a moisturizing lotion may help you in the short run, but in the long run, it's going to keep the skin drier by suppressing the natural moisture factor. So the first element in skin dryness is the stratum corneum layer. And that has to be robust and healthy to keep water from evaporating. The second layer in keeping the second uh, layer that's important in keeping the skin moist is the epidermis, which is underneath the stratum corneum, and that stays moist via this natural moisture factor. By the way, the natural moisture factor is produced by the action of skin cells as they're rising up from the surface. So skin cells are rising from the bottom of the epidermis towards the top of the epidermis to the stratum corneum. Can you picture this? Yeah. So the, the journey of a skin cell, and in the skincare business, we call this transit time or turnover time. It takes about four to eight weeks for this to occur. A skin cell is born in the bottom of the epidermis, and it gradually rises up to the top. And as it's rising to the top, it's dumping its contents overboard, and it's becoming progressively... It's changing from being a nice, fat, round, juicy cell at the bottom of the epidermis to a flat, dead, hard cell at the stratum corneum. 
And this is how the, this is how the stratum corneum is formed, this, the self-surface is formed. And as it's rising to the top, it's dumping its contents overboard. It's going from being a, a round, fat, juicy, plump cell to a flat, dead cell at the surface. And this is so cool. The contents that have been thrown overboard become the moisture factors. So as the cell is rising to the top, you're getting more and more moisture factors. This is a clue because it means okay. this is a clue to helping your, this is a clue number one towards understanding why our skin gets drier as we get older. And number two, it's a clue towards understanding how we can address this. Because you see, if you can speed up the rate of turnover time, you'll yeah. speed up the rate of the contents being thrown overboard and you'll get more and more moisture factors. As we get older, things slow down. And we don't get that same cell turnover, so we don't get the same amount of moisture factors. So it tells you that if you can figure out a way to speed up the rate of turnover time from, say, uh, six weeks or eight weeks, which occurs as we get older, more like four to six weeks or four or five weeks, like when we're younger, you'll have more and more of these contents being thrown overboard and your skin will stay moist. So exfoliation techniques, speeding, which speed up the rate of turnover time, uh, uh, speed up the rate that cells rise from the bottom to the top are a wonderful strategy for moisturizing the skin in the long run as long as you have the, nutri the nutrients available right. to, make, to make those raw materials. So that's something we'll talk about here in a sec. So you got the, the surface of the cell, the, the surface of the skin, the stratum corneum, that's got to be strong and healthy and robust, and that keeps water from leaking out or evaporating out. And then you have to have a healthy epidermis so that you can have all those moisture factors being made. And you've got to have a rapid rate of movement of cells rising from the bottom to the top so there'll be enough, enough, of, a, enough of the contents being thrown overboard to form the moisture factors. Mm -hmm. Then the third element in, uh, when it comes to dry skin is the lower level, the dermis, which is really the bulk of the skin. 90% of the skin or so is located underneath in the dermis. The dermis contains a very interesting cell called a fibroblast. Fibroblast in many ways is the most important cell when it comes to anti-aging the skin. The fibroblast, as the name would imply, makes fibers, specifically collagen fibers and elastin fibers. And these are fibers that keep your skin taut and resilient and youthful and uh, uh, anti -wrinkle, have anti-wrinkle properties. You know, you ever see uh, uh, what happens to an older person's skin when, when they pull it up a little yeah. bit? It and goes, it, kind of, yeah, it stays there. It stays out. It stays, <laughs> it stays out, right? There. Right? It stays out. Like this. It just kind of stays there, and then it gradually goes down. That's yeah. a mark of the lack of fibers in the skin. Wrinkles are the same thing, a lack of fibers in the skin. It happens as we get older. You know, youthful skin springs back. Right. That springing back is caused by a fiber called elastin. It's an elastic fiber. There's also a fiber called collagen, which we all know, uh, all know about, and that keeps the skin from wrinkling. The fibroblast makes collagen and makes elastin, but the fibroblast also makes very important substances called proteoglycans, specifically something called hyaluronic acid. And these proteoglycans, some people will call them GAGs or glucose aminoglycans, these substances are sugary protein substances that suck up water. Yeah. They, have a, they have a gelling effect with water, and they give the skin a certain bouncy quality to it, a certain, a certain uh, resilience to it. And these, these uh, water-trapping molecules help keep water local in the dermis. So these are the three elements of moisturization. You've got the stratum corneum preventing water from evaporating out. You've got the epidermis where fatty moisture factors are produced that trap water. And then you have the dermis where uh, hyaluronic acid and proteoglycans and substances like in, in, in that nature act to hold water and trap water in the dermis. That's not as much a moisturization issue that you're going to notice as dry skin, but it's a moisturization issue that will affect the skin thickness. Yeah. As skin becomes older, it becomes less plump, and this plumping effect is caused by, or is, a, is a created by water trapping, by the proteoglyc proteoglycans trapping water. So how do you address dry skin? Well, first of all, if you know that dry skin is, number one, caused by a defect in the stratum corneum or by weakened stratum corneum, you want to build a healthy stratum corneum, uh, stratum corneum being that hard layer. A couple ways to do that. Number one is you can speed up cell turnover, and that's done with exfoliation techniques, glycolic acid, alpha-hydroxy acids in general, lactic acid. Um, uh, some people like to use something called salicylic acid, which is a little bit stronger, getting regular peels at your esthetician. Uh, at an esthetician's office or uh, 
a salon. Also, you could do home exfoliation techniques with, with either glycolic acid or lactic acid. You could use fruits, things like uh, apple and pineapple and orange juice or oranges and lemons, citrus fruits have natural alpha hydroxy acids in them so you can make your own toners. Mm -hmm. You can even make a toner with frozen orange juice. Yeah. Just take, take a couple teaspoons of frozen orange juice, stir it up in water, makes a great toner. Aloe vera makes a great toner. These are all ways that you can speed up turnover time, which will number one, build a stronger, more robust stratum corneum. And number two, it will help speed up, it will help the epidermis because it's speeding up the movement of cells upwards, so they're dumping their contents overboard, making more moisture factors. A second thing you could do is use retinoids, vitamin A. This is why I created my, my retinol 5% healing cream, or retinol 5% uh, uh, gel. To give you a, you do need a high, there you go. You do need a high concentration of retinol to affect yeah. this. If you go to the doctor's office, you'll get Retin-A. I, I'm not fond of the product Retin-A or, or fake Retin-A uh, Retin products. They have things like uh, Adapalene and different. They require prescriptions. They're notoriously irritating, and they're very, very ugly formulations. I created the, my Retinol 5% gel to give people not only a high dose of Retinol, but also a high dose of vitamin C. And it turns out the topical vitamin C, which we'll talk about here in a minute, has some nice properties for moisturizing the skin as well. The fact that there's uh, my Retinol 5% gel has vitamin C in it and doesn't have any preservatives, it doesn't have any fragrance, it doesn't have any emulsifiers or waxes, allows you to use it once or twice right. a week without getting irritated. So if you tried to use an ordinary retinoic acid, or there you go, if you tried to use a, or, a retinoic acid product, uh, or a retinol product, and you got irritation, yep. you might find that uh, this might be a product that you want to use because most people don't get irritated from it. Yeah. So retinoids, vitamin A, uh, uh, retinol, even retinoic acid, these can help speed up turnover time, building a stronger, more robust stratum corneum, and also because as the cells are moving upwards, they're dumping their contents overboard, you get right. more moisture factors when you speed up exfoliation. Right. Now, there's a couple other topical things you could use. Uh, vitamin C is incredibly helpful for dry skin for a couple of reasons. Number one, vitamin C creates healthy cell development and healthy cell growth. So as the cells are moving upwards, they're healthier, and that means they have more contents to throw overboard. And number two, vitamin C is important for the production of these moisture factors so that the cells themselves will make more of the fats and more of the moisture factors if there's vitamin C present on the surface. And those are the two most important topical vitamins for skin moisturization, vitamin A and vitamin C. And along with exfoliation techniques, whether you're using retinoids or alpha hydroxy acids or salicylic acid, those are your main strategies for moisturizing the skin topically. What you want to stay away from is anything that seals the surface. Unless you're absolutely miserable and you need something uh, in the short term, if you use something that seals the surface, like a waxy lotion or cream, which is what right. most people use, you're going to run the risk of suppressing your natural moisture factors, creating a condition where you're addicted to your moisturizing lotion, where you have to use a moisturizing lotion yeah. in order to get away, in order to uh, keep your skin comfortable. You should, technically speaking, if you're healthy and your skin is healthy, you should never need a moisturizing cream. You should just need topical nutrients to keep the skin healthy. You should never need a moisturizing cream or lotion. And while for in the short term, in order to create a certain sense of comfort, you might want to use one. If you find that you're addicted or you can't, get a, uh, you can't go a day without your moisturizing cream or, or your body lotion, you want to think about perhaps you might want to start to develop some moisture factors and work on some internal nutritional strategies yeah. and digestive strategies because that is the core of taking yeah. care of your skin. I'm in, I've been creating skincare products now for 30 years, 30 plus years, and I know a lot about topical formulations, but I gotta tell you, Amanda, that's just scratching the surface of healthy skin. It's really all about what you're, take, what you're eating in terms of food and the kind of nutritional supplements that yeah. you're taking. And there's wonderful nutritional supplements for dealing, for dealing with dry skin. First and foremost, essential fatty yeah. acids, omega-6s and omega-3s, primarily omega-6s. The skin is loaded with omega-6. There's only a small amount of omega-3 in the skin. It's still important, but the skin is absolutely loaded with omega-6 okay. fats. Under conditions of essential fatty acid deficiency, and most people who are not supplementing are going to be deficient in essential fatty acids because they're very difficult to get from food, which is where your ultimate EFAs and ultimate EFA plus comes in. Yes. If, if you have dry skin, it's almost like the very definition of an EFA deficiency. I take Almost nine like a, a day. Awesome. Nine you can even take 12. You can even take 12. You can even take 15. You can't really even overdose no, on it. No. In fact, 
take them to the point, I recommend you take them to the point where you notice that your skin is changing. And you, okay. and you may have yeah. noticed. I have, I don't need lotion on my skin anymore. That's how it should be. Yeah. That's exactly how you know you've got enough essential fatty acids if you don't need lotion on your skin anymore. So your ultimate EFAs, both the omega-6s and the omega-3s, your skin is primarily a source of omega-6s, but, anti, but omega-3s have an anti-inflammatory effect and inflammation can change the way cells grow and, sh and cells rise to the top. So anti-inflammatory benefits can help with dry skin, and that's where the omega-3s come in. You can also right. use, of course, foods that contain omega-6s. Avocados, for example, are a wonderful source of omega-6s. Uh, seeds and grains uh, are good sources of omega-6s. Of course, we have problems with grains. Many people have problems with grains. So if you're going to do have grains, problems with grains, if you're going to do grains, make sure you sprout them. That's the way to get around it. Uh, sprouts are a good source of omega-6s also. Omega-3s are found in fish and uh, uh, flax seeds. I love flax seeds. Flax seeds are an amazing skin, skin health supplement. If you can do flax seeds, grind them up in a coffee grinder. Great for your digestive system. Wonderful source of omega-3s. There's also omega-6s. You get protein. You'll also get some vitamin E in flax fiber. Uh, another important uh, uh, internal nutrient for the skin, for dry skin, is vitamin A. Just like it's important topically, it's important internally, and like with essential fatty acids, it requires a healthy digestive system to absorb, and, and many, many of us don't have that, especially when it comes to bile, when it comes to liver, if you, uh, if you had a gallbladder removed, if you have irritable bowel syndrome or anything that causes diarrhea or loose stools, you're going to have issues absorbing fats. So we're going to talk about that here in a second. Uh, but it's just a good idea to get yourself on 10 to 20,000 international units a day of vitamin A. Uh, of vitamin A a day if you have right. dry skin. And also vitamin D is important for dry skin, which is interesting because vitamin D we know comes from the sun. In fact, vitamin D is created in the skin by a reaction between the sun and one of the most important moisture factors that's in the skin, and that is cholesterol. So the sun hits cholesterol, it turns it into vitamin D, which is why I always recommend people get a little bit of sun, despite the fact that most medical professionals and dermatologists and even skincare professionals tell you to avoid the sun. A little bit of sun, not burning, don't want to burn, but a little bit of sun is very important for vitamin D, and vitamin D is very important for keeping the skin healthy and helping keep the skin moist. You can also use uh, vitamin D supplements, vitamin D3 supplements, uh, 5,000 international units a day. There's some in the ultimate EFAs. You'll get some in fish uh, and organ meats are good sources of vitamin D. Uh, fish oil is also a good source of vitamin D. Uh, zinc is also important for keeping the skin healthy and keeping the skin moist. 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolinate. Um, protein, very underappreciated when it comes to keeping your skin moist. In fact, protein is part of that natural moisture factor sponge, especially amino acids, and especially an amino acid called arginine, which is really somewhat hard to find, especially for uh, folks who aren't eating right. a lot of high-protein foods. You can supplement with arginine, okay. arginine powder, okay. uh, arginine capsules or arginine powder. Uh, a great way to get your arginine is by using whey protein, and whey protein itself, the whey, is also a good natural moisturizer. Whey has an ability, helps the, helps the skin hold on to water, helps the skin trap water, and it's also a good source of arginine. So using your Slender FX, if you're using Longevity products, or getting on a whey protein supplement can be helpful. Now, all of these wonderful nutritional supplements, as wonderful as they are, are only going to work if you have a healthy digestive system, yeah. especially the fats. And we know that many people don't have a healthy digestive system, and we also know that women, as they get older, yeah. tend to not absorb their fats as well, and that's where your ultimate enzymes come in, which yeah. contain a couple of very important factors for helping the body absorb fats. Number one, something called bile, B-I-L-E, bile salts, extremely important for fat absorption, and then also an, uh, an enzyme called lipase, L-I-P-A-S-E, lipase, which is also important for fat absorption. If you want to get some extra enzymes, get something called pancreatin. Uh, there is a little pancreatin in the ultimate enzymes, but you can get extra yeah, pancreatin at a health food store. Um, uh, probiotics, super important for helping the body process fats. Probiotics also react with bile to help keep your intestines healthy. So uh, probiotics, they're just a, a good all-around uh, all nutritional supplement for the digestive tract, but specifically for helping the body process and absorb and utilize fats and fatty vitamins. So make sure you're on a good probiotic supplement. Um, let's see if there's anything else I well, want to Well, I'm about. thinking also you want to look for all these nutrients where they come with their cofactors because, you know, if oh, you just that's take... Where a good, that's where a good nutritional supplement program comes right. in. That's where the, the healthy start pack comes in in the morning. Exactly. 90. So all of these things that we're talking about, like the extra vitamin A and the extra vitamin D and uh, the extra zinc... 
all of these you should be taking with a good Mighty 90 Essential, uh, yeah. uh, Mighty 90 Essential Nutrient Program. And that's really what Dr. Wallach's genius was, is the idea yes. that the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients form the basis of everything. Right. So, yes, it's true. You can get some, you can take, you can get some uh, nice advantages by taking extra zinc or extra vitamin D, but you want to make sure that you're on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, the Healthy right. Start Pack, as the baseline to make sure that you got all the basic nutrients and the cofactors. Uh, a couple extra, uh, a couple other nutrients that might be helpful. Extra nutrients that might be helpful. Sulfur in the form of MSM. That's in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Sulfur gives the skin a certain hardness and creates a more robust, more vibrant stratum corneum. How about glucogel? Are they? In, is there, that in the glucogel? There, no, but glucogel also. There's not. It's not in the glucogel, but. Uh, I don't think it's in the. It might be. A, there might be a little in the glucogel. Okay. Actually, I think it's glucose. It might be a little in the glucogel, but glucosamine. Now that you mention it, also has a nice water trapping yeah. ability. So glucosamine in the glucogel that can also have uh, can give you some benefits for dry skin. So between all these strategies, Amanda, exfoliation strategies, keeping the stratum corneum healthy, supporting the movement of cells as they right. rise to the top, supporting. There are uh, the raw materials that it takes to make the natural moisture factor and stimulating the fibroblasts and vitamin A and essential fatty acids and probiotics and digestive enzymes. Nobody, nobody, nobody should ever have dry skin. If you do have dry skin, you want to regard it as either a nutri – well, you want to regard it as a nutritional deficiency that's associated to not getting enough nutrients or not absorbing the nutrients because of digestive issues. We'll see you in Anaheim. You will be there, Ben. Do you have I'll anything to say about that? Uh, I hope to see everybody. If you see me walking around there in the hotel, make sure you say okay, hi. Okay, yeah. Say hi to me too. Um, introduce yourself and you guys have a great day. Okay, Bye. thank Ben. Bye.